What's up my century unit? It's a central man here, so this is going to be my review for WWE Hell in a Cell 2019. This show was at the Golden One Center in Sacramento, California. Um, I'm going to do a quick result of the pre-show. The, the only pre-show match, that is uh, Natalia versus Lacey Evans. And Natalia defeated Lacey Evans by submission. Basically, Natalia locked Lacey Evans with the sharpshooter. I don't really care at this point, like, Lacey Evans, you know, she's not really good as a wrestler, man. She's proving, but I never find her interesting as a character. I think, for me, personally, I find her, she looks like a man. You know, if you like Lacey, uh, Lacey Evans, hey, um, more power to you. But I never, never find her, in, like, interesting in both in NXT and the main roster. Anyway, um, let's kick off the main match. Or really the main show, I'm trying to say. So, anyway, the first match to kick off the main show, we got the first Hell in a Cell match of the night. The women's Hell in a Cell match for the WWE Raw Women's Championship. Becky Lynch, the current champion, the man defending the belt against the boss, Sasha Banks. And this is match of the night. Match of the night. You know, it was a war between Sasha and Becky. Like... Like, I think it was, like, early uh, early parts of the match, you had, I think it was Becky used the chain, or I think it was Sasha or Becky used the chain, to, um, that was good. Uh, I think Sasha kind of worked on the arm of Becky Lynch, like, kind of slammed her arm into the cell door. And also, they got creative, like, they did, like, a lot of chair, uh, chess, like, spots. Like, at one point, like, like, Sasha kind of placed Becky on top of the chair. And she did like a knee, a flying knee to the face onto the top rope. And also hours, or really, in the, in like later on, you had like they kind of placed some candlesticks onto the edge of the cell walls, and and also placed the chair on top of the onto the two candlesticks. I think it was on, I think it was Becky kind of placed Sasha on onto the chair, and I think it did a. Baseball sliding drop kick that was good. Um, I think it was Becky or Sasha. I think it was yeah. I think Sasha kind of put Becky through the table. He did like a a double knee stump onto Becky, onto the onto the top rope, put her into the table. I thought she'd win. I think like um, they I think they did like a spot with the powers of chairs. Um, anyway, uh, Becky got the win. He kind of made uh, Sasha Banks to tap out with the disarmor, and Becky retained her Raw Women's Championship. I I knew Becky would win. You know, I thought Sasha would win. Unfortunately, that's not the case. I think the one wrestler, the one wom woman's wrestler going to be Becky for the championship, it's going to be Ronda Rousey. I think they're going to do the Becky Ronda match at WrestleMania 36. That's my predictions. You know, I I I, I can see Ronda. Coming back at the Royal Rumble to win the Royal Rumble match and challenge Becky for the Royal Women's title at WrestleMania. Anyway, let's let's continue reviewing the matches on the main show. Uh, okay, the second match of the night we got a tornado tag team match. We got uh, Eric Rowan and Luke Harper versus Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns, and this was good. I thought it was a schmaz, but for me, this was fucking what? This was fucking good. Not very great. Oh, good match. This was good. You know, you don't really see a lot of Tornado t Tag matches in WWE these days. It's very rare. So, anyway, um, like, one more of the match, you had, like, I think it was... Roman hit the, um, I think it was... I think it was a, a baseball sliding drop kick on Rowan. Harper did a suicide dive to, Ro uh, to Roman. <laughs> oh, it's confusing because you got Rowan and Roman. It sounds... The same. Anyway, um, I think it was Harper kind of like grabbed like a piece of the, the barricade and kind of slammed Roman into it. Um, I think like <laughs> it, this is a good spot. Like Daniel Bryan did a hurricane runner to Rowan, not not Rowan, uh, to Harper. Reigns kind of spear uh, Rowan into the announce table. Anyway, um, yeah, R Roman and Daniel Bryan got the win. It's a damn shame. I really would like. See Rowan and Harper winning, but unfortunately they're going with the baby faces. You know, I think this rivalry still continue between 
Brian and Roman and uh, Harper and Rowan. Okay, um, and then we've got uh, Randy Orton versus Ali. This is a bathroom break match. This has lasted about 12 minutes. You know, it was basically eh, just eh, nothing like special, not interesting. Um, in the end, Randy Orton got the win, hit the RKO to Ali. You know, Ali had some offense, but Ron, uh, Orton got the win, you know. You know, it's good to see Randy Orton, you know. I think he's now not doing anything since he's out of the WWE title picture. You know, ever since, uh, you know, right now Brock Lesnar is the champion. You know, another topic for another time. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's that's match number three. That was, yeah, eh. Match number four, we got the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship match. Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross, the current Women's Tag Team Champions, defending the belt against the Kabuki Warriors, that is Asuka and Kairi Sane. This was decent. This was a decent match between uh, four women in the ring. Asuka, Kairi, Alexa, and Nikki. Like, in the end... You had like, you know, Alexa did like, I think it was a moonsault onto the ring apron to Kairi. Um, Asuka kind of spit green, uh, green mist into Nikki to pin her and the Kabuki, war the Kabuki <laughs> I can't say it. The Kabuki Warriors won the, won the tag team tiles, uh, you know. They need to have them, make them show up on Raw and SmackDown, make the tiles special. At this point, they're not making it special. I think I think it's starting to be good ever since like Alexa Bliss and Nikki as champions because they're showing up on TV. Before that, you know, you don't really see the iconics on TV. You know, it's starting to be a joke. I'm not really a big fan of the women's tag team uh, championship division. You know, look at TNA. They did the uh, knockouts tag team division and it flopped. Anyway, um, yeah, the, yeah, the Kubu yeah, the the women's tag team title match was good. It was decent. Okay, and then we got a six-man tag team match. We got the um, the OCs. That's the original club. The the current United States champion AJ Styles, um, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson versus the Viking Raiders. That is Ivor and Eric, and the Monster Among Men, Braun Strowman. And this was a schmaz. This was a fucking train wreck. It's going to be okay, but this match end in a Disqualification, you had both uh, Gallows and Anderson being trying to beat the down on Strowman. Yeah, this was eh. This match was better off on Monday Night Raw. And then you had, you had, you had the, the Viking experience, or not Viking experience, the Viking Raiders, you know, coming, equaling the odds. You know, it, I think you had uh, Strowman, didn't hit the, um, it didn't hit, I don't, I don't remember, I don't really care at this point, it was shit. I think he hit AJ Styles and that's it. Like, I'm moving on, moving on. I'm losing my fucking brain cells. And, the, and then, the, yeah, this show's getting fucking worse, man. Okay, and then we got um, King Corbin versus Chad Gable. And this was, again, eh, a, more of a bathroom break match. I don't play a bathroom break match. It was about 12 minutes, man. It was nothing really special. Um, in the end, Corbin was about to hit uh, Gable with the... Uh, the scepter, the scepter, uh, Gable r g really pin uh, King Corbin with uh, I think it was a small package or a schoolboy pin to win this match. Okay, let's move on to um, the SmackDown Women's Championship match. We got Bailey, def the hometown girl, defending the belt against Charlotte Flair, and this part, this match was good. For the problem, this is ten minutes long. They should have got a lot, they should have got like fifteen minutes. You know, this match was a bit physical between Charlotte and Bailey. It wasn't like terrible, but I think it was good. You know, yeah, Charlotte kind of work on the leg of Bailey. Um, you know, Bailey, I started like the I like the new Bailey as a heel. You know, Bailey is starting to be more ruthless. I think they need to, for me personally, they need to change up her, update her theme theme music, and her like costume, her character. It's still the same, you know. You know that's another topic of another time. You know she's still her theme music. Theme music was so happy go lucky, man. It's just what it is. Um, in the end, uh, Charlotte Flair hit the um, really locked Bailey with the figure eight leg lock or figure four leg lock. Bailey tapped out, and Charlotte won the women's title for a tenth time. They want Charlotte Flair to break her dad's record. 
you know, Bailey's tile reign, uh, I think it's her fifth or sixth month tile reign, came to the end. You know, she won the belt at uh, Money in the Bank in May. Ended at Hell in Cell in October. You know, I don't say it was a terrible match, but for me personally, I think it was, it was physical. It was thumbs in the middle for me. And then we got the shit main event. <laughs> We got the second Hell in the Cell match of the night. Seth Rollins, the current Universal Champion, defending the belt against The Fiend, Bray Wyatt. Fuck me. <laughs> it lasted about 17 minutes. It was fucking boring. It was basically one sided. One fucking sided. And during this match, this uh, the arena turns red. That was part, I think it's part of Bray Wyatt's shtick. Like years ago, if you watched a Sin Cara match, from 2011, they kind of dimmed the lights orange. I don't really, I don't really get that. So anyway, um, yeah, fucking one-sided. Bray Wyatt, kinda, like Seth Rollins, kind of like, dominated this whole match. And the end, the the end was so anticlimactic, so anticlimactic. You had Seth Rollins hit Bray Wyatt with the um sledgehammer. The match ended in DQ, and the fans were booing this the whole main event. They're chanting bullshit. We want refunds and AEW, man. You know, I'll do a rant after this review, but fucking hell. They did this same ending last year between Brock Lesnar and Braun Strowman. Had Brock Lesnar came out of nowhere and cost a DQ. So now it's DQ now in Hell in a Cell matches. You know, I'm going to save it till the rant video, but anyway, Hell in a Cell 2019. Yeah, this... This is basically the one match show. The one match you should watch is the the, the opening match. Becky vs Sasha, the first Hell in a Cell match of the show. Besides that, yo, I like the ta the, the Tornado Tag Team match and the Women's Tag Team match. Besides that, other other of these matches are just eh. And also Bailey and Sasha was okay, man. So uh, anyway, that's my Hell in a Cell 2019 review. And this show was. Just a one-match show. Anyway, like, share, subscribe. We'll see you next time.